book is called The Great Dog Bottom Swap and it's the perfect book for anyone who has ever wondered why dogs sniff each other's bums. We're going to try and make some connections whilst we're reading. Remember that a connection is when something in the story reminds you of something else. Maybe something you read in another book. Or something you saw on TV or in a movie. Or maybe something from your own life. Let's look at the cover of the book. I can see the title and the name of the author and the name of the illustrator. Don't the dogs in the picture look very talented? One is playing a double bass, one is playing the piano and the other one is playing a saxophone. The blurb is going to tell us a bit more about what to expect in this story. The dogs are having a ball today. Roll up for the canine cabaret. It started one fine summer night when every pooch and mush in sight was jumping and jiving to the band but things did not turn out as planned. Sit back and enjoy this rollicking canine caper. It's barking mad. Well, this sounds like it's going to be a good read. Let's get started. Here's an invitation to the dog ball. The day had arrived for the dog's summer ball. All the dogs in the world were lined up at the hall, where a sign on the door said, now please be so kind as to keep your coat on, but remove your behind. Please hang up your bottom on one of the pegs, and remember, no growling or cocking of legs. So as they went in, every dog, pooch and pup, they took off their bottoms and hung them all up. Hundreds and hundreds of little pink O's, all neatly arranged in methodical rows. What a feast the dogs had at the ball on that night. The table was quite a magnificent sight. They dined on fresh giblets and dog biscuit stew, with slippers and old dug-up sheep bones to chew. Then doggy chalk ices, all creamy and brown, and fresh puddle water to wash it all down. I've got a connection. Seeing those dogs sitting down for dinner reminded me of the movie Hotel for Dogs. Have you seen it? In the movie, there is a scene with lots of dogs sitting down at a table eating. Then Coco the Conjurer got a huge laugh by pretending to saw a Dalmatian in half. And now, Coco said to great woofs of applause, it's time for the dancing, so up on your paws. Do those dogs dancing and doing tricks make you think of a connection? I've seen performing dogs on television before, have you? What about these good boys who were on Britain's Got Talent? Look at us, said an overexcited young hound as he whisked a fox terrier clear off the ground. Watch out, cried a sensible boxer named Clive as the hound and the terrier started to jive. They swirled and they twirled even faster and faster until, oh, dog catastrophe! What a disaster! The twirling was more than the Afghan could handle. He suddenly tripped and knocked over a candle. Oh, which fell on the curtains, which promptly caught fire, being old and quite cheap, sending flames even higher. Some dogs broke the rule that forbade hind leg cocking, but the fire soon spread with a speed that was shocking. Don't panic! barked Clive in a great fit of passion. Let's all try to leave in an orderly fashion. But that was an order they chose to ignore as they scurried and scuttled like heck for the door. As the last dog shot out of the hall with a bark, the lights all went foot and the whole place went dark. 
Wait a minute, said Clive to the panicking mutts. Our bottoms, our bottoms, we must save our butts. So into the cloakroom they bumbled and tumbled, and soon all the bottoms were hopelessly jumbled. As every dog grabbed the first bottom they saw, and fled the great fire with a bum in their paw. Luckily every dog got out alive, and no one was caught by the fire except Clive, and some others whose tails had been singed all the way, which is why all those dogs have no tails to this day. And all the dogs' bottoms were rescued as well, but because of the darkness no doggy could tell whose bottom was whose in the panic and scrum, so each dog went home with another dog's bum. I've got a connection. That building on the hill makes me think of another building on the hill. Can you think? What about this house on the hill? Do you know who lives in that house? Yes, Peppa Pig and her family. And ever since then, when a pair of dogs meet in the park or the playground, the woods or the street, each dog gives the other dog's bottom a sniff to see if it has the particular whiff of the bottom they lost on that night of the ball when the dogs hung their bums on the hooks in the hall. The end. Well, that was wonderfully silly. I really enjoyed reading that. Did you? The next time you see a dog sniffing another dog's bottom, you will know exactly why. There were dogs of all shapes and sizes and colours in this story. Do you know which dog breed is the smallest in the world? Chihuahuas are one of the smallest dog breeds in the world. And a Great Dane is one of the biggest dog breeds in the world. Look how big that boy is. Imagine a dog that size in your house. <laughs>